Hey guys, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering, and in this video we're going over two and three-fourths members. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe. So knowing what two and three-fourths members are in statics is a tool to help us solve equilibrium equations. And to be honest, I got through all of statics without even knowing what these were or what it meant to be a two or three-fourths member. It's really not that complicated, but it isn't completely necessary either. And so preparing for this video took me like 10 minutes to figure out what it was. And that's what I'm going to explain to you guys. So basically a two-fourths member is what it sounds like. It's a member or an object that only has two forces acting on it. And the way that that object can be in equilibrium is if those two forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite direction, and along the same line of action. And what that looks like, so let's say we have a curved beam, something like this, and we have two forces pulling at this point and at this point. Well, the only way this beam can be in equilibrium, or in other words, not moving, is if these two forces are equal in how hard they're pulling and pulling in opposite directions. If they're both pulling like this, the net force would end up being this way and you'd get the, that the beam was moving that way. So the only way to keep it in place is if these two forces are pulling in opposite directions and are equal in magnitude and their forces line up. So if I drew a line between this point and this point, well, the line of action of both of these forces has to be along this line. Otherwise, say one was out here, it would cause rotation, it would cause it to rotate this way. And so that would not be in equilibrium. So again, these two forces have to be equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and have to be along the same line of action. So that's a two force member, it's quite a bit simpler and probably even more useful than a three-force member. But basically a three-force member has to have all three forces being in a concurrent or parallel system. And what that means is a parallel system is that all three forces are parallel to each other. And a concurrent system looks something like this. If we have a beam here, and we have two forces pulling on both ends, something like maybe that, and something like that. Well, their lines of action would come off something like that, and this one would be like that. So they'd intersect about right there. Well, for it to be in equilibrium, the forces for one have to be the right magnitude, but it also has to be that the third point passes through this line too. So whether that is going perpendicular to the beam or in another direction and it's probably going to be going the opposite direction for it to be in equilibrium but it has to be going through that point also or in other words basically this all three forces have to be going through the same point they all have to go through one point so their lines of actions will all intersect and in the special case that they're all parallel Again, the forces have to be the right magnitude for it to be in equilibrium, and you probably have to solve for that. But that is a three-force member. All right, guys, so that's two and three-force members, and it's not that complicated and probably not that useful either, but if you want to know about it, here it is. I uh, found this video helpful. Hit that like button. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe.